Hey everybody, welcome to our devotional for the day. Listen, if you've got a Bible, pick it up, turn to Judges chapter 16. The next couple of days we're going to be looking at this great, uh, let me just put it this way, very famous Bible character by the name of Samson. So I say that name and a lot of you are thinking about a strong guy, but he made some really poor, we might even say dumb decisions. And you know, the reason we have stories of men like Samson and men and women in the Old Testament is because they teach us life lessons. There's a passage in the New Testament that says, these stories are recorded so that you'll learn, you'll learn how to live. And I don't know about you, but often I learn the best through the mistakes of others. And can I be honest with you? And through my own mistakes, my own foul-ups. And so I think there's some great life lessons to learn from Samson. And it doesn't really matter who you are, how old you are, you know, how long you've been a Christian or any of that. There's always something to learn. There's always a life lesson to be reminded of. So let's dig into Samson's story and see what we can learn, all right? We're gonna do it over the next couple of days. So I'm gonna read a few verses of his story. We're gonna to have to do it at a pretty high level. I'll let you read all of the verses in detail on your own. And let's begin with verse four. And it simply says, sometime later he, that is Samson, fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Now, if you do a little investigating, you'll find out that Samson had no business getting into a relationship with this woman, Delilah. There was nothing about it that was good. And you know what? This, in some ways, was the beginning of his downward spiral. It was this relationship with Delilah. And I'm reminded that relationships have a great impact on all of us. In the New Testament, you'll find a line that goes something like this, bad company or bad relationships corrupt or destroy good morals. Well, that's easy enough to understand, isn't it? The people that we hang out with, they influence us. How we think, the decisions that we make. And in Samson's case, Building a relationship, getting involved with Delilah was trouble. And that's why it's important for us to be wise in choosing our relationships. The people that we're going to hang out with, invest ourselves in. you got to be really wise about it. Jump down to verse 5. So, the rulers of the Philistines went to her, that is Delilah, watch this, and said, see if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how he, uh, we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. Now, you're kind of familiar with that part of the story, at least most of you are, and that is, okay, so she's going to work on trying to get Samson to divulge the secret of his great strength. And that's why, that's just one reason why this relationship was really bad. You see, Samson is going to begin to toy with temptation. Uh, you read the rest of the story and you're going to find where Samson is asked multiple times by Delilah, Tell me your secret. Listen, say what you will about Samson. He wasn't dumb. He made some dumb decisions, but he wasn't a dumb man. He knew what he was doing, and he was toying with temptation. There's a lesson there. Again, I don't know about you, but if I'm going to be honest about myself, there are times when instead of fleeing temptation, I play with it. I get as close to it as I possibly can without hopefully getting burned. But you know what? 
If you mess around with temptation, sooner or later, you're going down. And you know that. I know that because we've learned by experience. That's the way it works. Well, look at verses 15 and 16. So I'll let you read in between. But when you jump to 15 and 16, so then Delilah said to Samson, how can you say, I love you when you won't confide in me. This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. Now, that's pretty graphic. Three times, three times, Delilah says, tell me your secret. And again, Samson's been toying with temptation and he would lie to her and she would spring the trap and he would defeat those that were trying to overtake him. But she hung in there and she says, you know, how can you say you love me? And she kept prodding him. As a matter of fact, my translation of the Bible says nagging. She just kept coming at him. But you see, he put himself in that position. It's really interesting. You know, you would think the first time she tried to coax the secret out of him and he saw what happened, you would think he would learn, man, I need to get out of here. And if not the first time, the second time. But now we're into the third time and he's still there. And finally, he reveals his secret to Delilah. And you know the story. His hair is cut. And his power is gone. And that takes us to verses 19 and 20. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him. And his strength left him. Then she called, Samson. The Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go outside as before and shake myself free. Don't forget that line. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. I think that last line is one of the saddest, you know, that you can read. He didn't realize this time that the Lord had left him. He didn't realize really fully what he had done, where he had ended up until it was too late. You know that line, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this like I did two times previously. That's kind of like the person who says, you know, I could quit at any time. I just don't want to quit yet. But whenever I want to, I can quit. Really? Really? Or this, this isn't really going to affect me. It may affect you. It may affect this person. But it's not going to have an impact on my life. Really? Really? You see, Samson thought, I've done this twice before. I've dealt with it. I've toyed with with." sin, and I'll deal with it again. But this time, it was different. And I think the big difference was, this time, the Lord was gone. This time, the Lord had left him. So as we close today, you know, I just want to tell you, and I know this is pretty sobering, but I don't know about you, I need these kind of reminders every once in a while in my life. And here it is. Sometimes we can be so foolish in the decisions that we make and the road that we start walking down and the games we kind of play with sin that we don't realize the Lord's leaving us. 
maybe little by little, but the Lord is leaving us. And we wake up one day and we realize he's gone. He's gone. So think about that. Think about it in your life. And we'll talk more about Samson tomorrow. Bye.